Hi, this is Rex Carden with the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and today we're going to look at how you can quickly bootstrap your application uh, with the Eclipse Scripting API X library. That's the extension library uh, that I have lots of uh, YouTube videos about, and uh, sometimes it can be difficult to just get started with it. So I'm going to show you how to get started with it in just a few seconds, and uh, really just will add some power to your application with very little effort. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go uh, onto our Eclipse workstation, open Visual Studio. This is only going to work in Visual Studio Community Edition uh, 2017. Well, it doesn't have to be Community Edition, but it needs to be in 2017. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to go to the Tools, Extensions and Updates, and click on Online. And up here in the search, type in Asapi. You're now going to see two WPF templates and these are going to be the starter templates uh, that are going to inject the power of Asapi X uh, so you don't have to do all the plumbing to get started with it. So when you click download it's going to pop up this little yellow bar your changes will be scheduled. You have to close that of Visual Studio completely. So uh, when, you, when you do that you're going to have to click modify and sometimes you have to end this perf Watson test that, that kind of hangs out after you close Visual Studio. You'll see a green check box that shows everything's good. Let's go back into Visual Studio. So you only have to do that one time. Once you've installed it, you'll have it from here on out. If you go to File, New, Project, now you can see in your C Sharp templates, you've got this new Asapi X 13.6 WPF template. And so that's the template we're going to start with. Let's go ahead and just click OK. Just to show you how fast you can get up and running with this, let me just show you if you switch this to X64 and press Start, it's going to download all of the NuGet packages associated with that. And then it's going to go ahead and start up the scripting API. So it's got all the references built in for you. And here is our application. So we didn't do anything. This is all free just from downloading that template. And what we're seeing here is the overlay from the Asapi X uh, bootstrapping library. This allows us to pretend like we are in plugin mode. We have a, a plugin, but we're really not. We're in standalone mode. And up here you can just type in uh, some patient ID and uh, what this does is you can uh, selectively inject um, a script context into your application based on what's, what course you have selected and which plans you have selected. You can also see here we have uh, my username and it says is currently logged in. This is just a, an example. This is really just a blank application. This is showing you how to data bind to a view model. So let's look at the application uh, more carefully and see how it's designed and, and where you would jump in to modify it. Over here you can see we have our, our folder structure. We have view models and views. In the views we have the main view. That's where the application is launching. That's the main window. And then our main view model. That's the, the backing model for this main view. Down here in the app.xaml, we have this app.xaml.cs. This is actually where the application is really starting up when we, when we press debug up here or start. Now we're overriding the on startup and we are uh, creating this app bootstrapper from the Asapi X bootstrapper library. And that's, that's what's creating the, the Varian. Uh, it's logging into the Varian ecosystem and then starting up the main view. It does some other things but kind of behind the scenes. This is multi-threading. Uh, so it's, it's adding a new, new thread so you can do um, asynchronous calls uh, in your application. It's really adding quite a bit of power uh, right here in just three lines of code. You also get this script.cs file. This is um, what Eclipse is expecting to see if you're going to run it in plug-in mode. So you don't have to touch anything here. Uh, this is just what it looks like. And um, if you wanted to add some dependency injection variables, you could do that um, under this uh, var dot or var bs uh, variable. But that's very advanced. Uh, you, most people, you don't have to do anything here. 
it's just there so uh, you can run it in plugin mode. I'll show you how to do that in a second. If we go to our main view, you'll see it's just a blank uh, canvas with this uh, text up here. It's referencing the Prism library, and it's got this auto wire view model equal true. This is these are like the standard uh, Prism window setups that allow for auto injection of the view model. That way you don't have to set it; it's doing it all automatically for you. If you're going to just use one one window like this, then this is all you're going to. You won't have to do anything. You can just uh, change what's inside this grid, and then change uh, the view model a little bit, and that will be your application. Um, here is the example uh, that you see up there. It says uh, we have a text block with two runs, and in this run you can see we're binding to a variable called username, which is on the uh, backing view model. So let's go look at that on the main view model in the view models folder. This is a very simple view model. It doesn't have uh, very many properties. It's really just got this one, and you can see it's set up for data binding. This is this is kind of one of those pivotal methods of data binding when you're using the PRISM library, we're using the PRISM bindable base class for our view model. But you could create your own properties here, and they, as long as they look like this, you have a backing field, a property, and then you have this set property, ref, backing field, value. This is the way that you can data bind. Uh, basically what this does is update the user interface whenever any of these properties change. And you can see here we're just setting it as soon as this main view model is initiated. So if you're going to modify the application, this is where you'd start. You can see that you've got this iScript context. iScript context is um, the interface that SOPIX uses to uh, basically unify the architecture of standalone applications and plugin applications. So, in principle, what this allows you to do is just create one application, and you can run it both ways. Uh, this is beneficial for uh, debugging, because you can run it in standalone mode and just test out your application easily. And then you can run it in plug-in mode when you're ready to go live with it. You can see the iScript context has the same properties as uh, the script context. It has a couple of different ones that, that are not in the script context. You've got this patient changed, plan setup changed. Uh, you have these events that are going to fire. Those are firing um, whenever you change uh, the patient in that little overlay. It fires an event down so you can change um, your your views if you wanted to while you're in standalone mode. So we've already seen it run in standalone mode. That was that was just by pressing start as soon as we uh, downloaded uh, and, ran, and ran this template. Let's um, Let's look at how to run it in script mode. If you uh, go to your properties of the project, uh, Clip Scripts have to have this .isapi extension. So you need to make sure that your assembly name, when it's compiled, um, ends in .esapi. Then you can just press Build. It builds it out. And let's open its uh, location. So this is debug. So here's our file that we just compiled. You can see it's an exe. I'll just run, let's just run this again so you can see it still runs. So it's in standalone mode. But you'll see the same, same thing we just had. This is where you would mode up your patients. Um, I think I've got a patient here with some more plans. So you can see this is where you would select the plan that's in focus. So it'd be equivalent to bringing it into Eclipse in the window section. And every time that you change these plans, a, that planned change event is firing. You could also, if there are multiple courses, this is the course uh, dialog. If there are multiple courses and you select a different course, uh, you have a course change event as well. Okay, so since we compiled this in the uh, .esapi, um, Unfortunately, Eclipse needs to see this in a DLL form, I believe. So let's just let's just change that exe to DLL. And yes, you can do that. And so we didn't change anything about the application. We just changed the extension from exe to DLL. And now, if we go to Eclipse, we can um, go to Tools, Scripts, and you can see I'm pointed to that directory where we just built. And I'll just run it. 
you can see you get the same application. Okay, so there's no there's no difference in the code. Um, it ran that that main window, and it, it's now running in uh, the script plugin mode. So it's a very simple uh, setup, and it lets you quickly build applications that are uh, a little bit more powerful than uh, just trying to do this all from scratch. Another thing here is that this is actually running in a multi-threading mode. So the script context is running in a different thread than the, this main window is. And you might be able to see when you close this window, there's a small little window up here that also closed. So Eclipse, uh, the Asapi X library hijacks the uh, initial window that's provided by Eclipse and it uh, creates its own window system so that you can have m multiple threads running. So that is it. Um, that's it's relatively straightforward. Um, it's actually pretty powerful without you having to do hardly any work uh, to get a pretty functional uh, little application here. So hopefully that helps you build in the Eclipse Scripting API uh, libraries. And uh, let me know if you have any comments. Thanks.